Panchadashi chapter 11 on verse 115 and here it was 115 and here when the student asked how long asked or how long should this yoga be practiced what is the extent of practice required and this was told through the various examples and quotation of the various scriptures and now uh, uh, we come to Uh, come to the 115th verse. In the 114th verse, it was told, Chittasya hi prasadena hanti karma shubha shubham prasannatma atmani sthitva sukha makshaya mashnute. Meaning, having destroyed all the good and bad deeds by the purification of chitta. Chitta means the mind, and not by any other means. With a purified heart, the seeker attains undecaying bliss after being established in the self. So here, how do you purify the mind? Not whichever way works for you. It could be pranayam, it could be the Lord's name, but the bestest and most efficient and quick resulting, if we may use that word, is contemplation on the self and the more you keep the attention on the self to that extent the the impurities of the mind uh, get removed just now when i took the topic in uh, hobart the topic was lord kapila's teaching to devahuti his mother uh, there he tells she asks oh oh lord she's telling her son even though he is her son, but as a son, he, she will not get any teachings, only as a teacher. So she says, Oh Lord, my, I am living at a sensory level and I am continuously taking care of the house and I am only involved in you. Have you eaten? Have you slept? How, all, all those things. I am tired of it. Now I want to get out of it and I want to merge into you. I want to merge into the Lord. So please tell me. And there he says, before I tell you how, how that happens, first you purify the mind. And how do you purify the mind? He says, Tivra Bhakti Yogena. Tivra means intense. Bhakti means devotion. Yoga <laughs> means bring about the union or purification. So with intense contemplation, with love, on the Lord's name in your heart, on the Om, or continue intensely contemplating on that life that is throbbing through you. Where is this consciousness? What is this consciousness? I am this consciousness. So on the sense of I am, intensely contemplate and that will purify the mind. And after, after this comes about, then the Lord Kapila gives her the Sankhya Yoga, the difference between the matter and the spirit. So here also, same thing the Lord is saying. Here the Lord, not the Lord, here the teacher is uh, saying that 
the mind the world needs to be devalued and at the same time the uh, the the self has to be accepted with faith and what happens there you go beyond duality and dualism what does it mean that you go beyond duality and dualism it does not mean that you become a zombie in this world no then what happens just like you are sitting here right now you are all focused on me and the words that are coming out of coming from me your eyes are seeing so many things in the room but are those things that you are seeing are they making an impact on your mind no you are not you are not available to those stimuli your ears are hearing so many different sounds are you available to those sounds you are hearing but are you available you are only available to what is being heard from me but your ears accept no that there are other sounds but they are not allowing them to influence the mind isn't it see similarly all the senses at this very moment you be aware this can be an this can be a meditation but for that you have to focus on something uh, so this we are practicing already what scriptures are telling us is what we are already practicing they are making us aware of it so that we live a life of awareness not in a what you call uh, a life of default processes so that is called dropping the world dropping the world does not mean i want to run away from the world <laughs> dropping the world means living in the world but not allowing not i shouldn't use the word not allowing you are so focused on something higher that the world in which you are living is no longer able to impact your mind it doesn't grab your attention why your attention is on something higher that is the divine in the heart or the consciousness within then in the 115th verse sama saktam yatha chittam sama saktam yatha chittam jantor vishaya gochare jantor vishaya gochare yadyevam brahmani syatat yadyevam brahmani syatat ko na mochet bandhanat as the mind of the being is effortly effortlessly attached to the sense objects if that mind can be attached equally effortlessly to the reality the brahman the in uh, uh, unborn principle to that conscious uh, principle who will not be liberated from the bondage of the world exactly the point that i just made so we know how to effortlessly glide into sleep we know effortlessly to uh, catch the train on time and go to work we know effortlessly to when the hunger come uh, go and to go to the kitchen and get something to eat so seeing is happening effortlessly all sensory organs are functioning effortlessly including the mind also thinks effortlessly <laughs> you don't have to put any effort to think the thoughts are coming of their own accord everything the blood is flowing the hunger is coming the thirst is coming the pressure is coming everything that is happening in you as a, as a embodied a, or, uh, or or this equipment everything is happening effortlessly if you allow it the moment you take ownership of that which is taking place of its own accord you create friction and that's the point time that when we start <coughs> seeing difficulties in seeing start <coughs> seeing difficulties in uh, thinking or sleeping etc 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 so if we know there exactly the same words are used in kapil muni's uh, the the sankhya yoga which i was just mentioning 
there he tells his mother that if you are living at sensory level and you are attached to things there is no problem all i am not telling you to give up attachment he says only change the topic of attachment instead of getting attached to the world you get attached to the lord <laughs> keep attachment intact but change the theme of your attachment change the topic of your attachment don't stop hearing hearing no talking no evil hearing no evil seeing no evil this is uh, this is very uh, uh, what you call unnatural how long can you close your senses cannot then what do you do hear no evil okay change the topic of what you want to hear change the topic of what you speak change the topic of what you see change the topic of what you think and keep practicing it again and again and again and again and when it will become natural it will be directly proportional to the intensity with which you change the topic that it will become natural to you see that is the system that is how this equipment functions this is how this machine functions you have to understand you cannot say that from the bulb i want i want uh, air to blow it cannot happen only <coughs> light will come out of the bulb and there are certain rules by which this uh, expression of electricity as light happens exactly the same way there is a way there is a technology there is a system by which our mind functions it is a creature of habit change the habit the mind changes <laughs> that's all so attachment is directly proportional to the value we give to the object of attachment see attachment is directly proportional to the value we give to the so if people complain someone came the other day they said swami ji we have a problem i said what happened no since we started meditation and we have been listening to geeta and other things i don't know what has happened in last one month so many fears are coming i am afraid when i go on the road i will have an accident i am afraid if my, if my daughter has a uh, or the son has a fever i feel that they are going to die when i go to work oh i am not good enough and yet they might they might uh, throw me out of the job all negativity is coming so what do i do <laughs> you have got two choices one is stop meditating <laughs> if this is the problem stop meditating second understand that you are giving too much value to these thoughts because you are doing your japa because you are doing your meditations your mind is becoming calm the superficial problems have been taken care of you have overcome them now some deeper problems are surfacing themselves now and now that you are ready to face them so they are appearing in your mind now what do you now if they are becoming a problem it means that you are giving attention and value to them shift your attention and value give more attention and value the intensity with which you are telling me about your fears and what has happened in last one month i have never heard you tell me about your spiritual journey so intensely <laughs> isn't it oh, think about it he says yes and they went away it clicked so hopefully everything is going well if they don't come back it's good see this is how our mind we have to understand how it functions that's all there are some very deep seated issues no doubt in everyone but they are not in you they are in the mind and as long as we can stand apart and not give value and attention to it those deep seated issues can be resolved or don't think too much about them just focus on the higher whenever they have to get rid of the mind will get rid of them and in this way 
यदि एवं ब्रह्मण स्यात if the same intensity of attachment is a uh, uh, and value are given to one's own essential nature to the consciousness within to the self within uh, 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 with total and full commitment without any compromise is there any bondage for such a person possible he will attain liberation there and then it will happen have no doubt about it and such a world will not be able to trouble him why because he is not available to the world <laughs> troubles disease will come difficulties will come hunger will come but he is not available to them how is not available to them because his whole mind or his whole attention is on the higher that's how now the mind is analyzed mano hi dvividham proktam mano hi dvividham proktam shuddham cha shuddham eva cha shuddham cha shuddham eva cha ashuddham kama samparkat ashuddham kama samparkat shuddham kama vivarjitam Shuddham kama viva jitam. The mind is said to be of two kinds, pure and impure. In association with the desires, it is called impure, and when it is devoid of desires, etc., it is called pure. Hmm? Before also, the mind was told to of two types. One is that mind which gets attached. goes towards the world was called the impure mind that which that mind which because it has got two two way it can go two ways outwards and inwards and when it goes inwards and contemplates on the lord in the heart or the self within it becomes it is called the pure mind now another way it is being uh, told it is told that that mind which is full of desires is associating with desires has projects gives value to the world is an impure mind and that mind which is continuously in brahmano chintanam contemplating on the reality such a mind uh, becomes eventually pure or in other words in that mind where there are no desires erupting such a mind becomes is called a pure mind is it possible for the mind to become free of all desires yes it is it is right now it is not our reality in deep sleep there are no desires isn't it so it is possible <laughs> in deep sleep there are no desires mind is empty similarly in meditation also the mind can be empty and you are there there are no desires such a mind is a pure mind when practiced again and again and again it becomes the norm it becomes the default and when desires arise in the mind the immediate urge is to fulfill it what do we fulfill why do we want to fulfill a desire here swami ji says fulfillment of desire is the removal of desire isn't it once the desire is fulfilled that desire does not erupt again isn't it so why you are removing because it is an unnatural expression in the mind see now if you see this beard it is growing a little bit wild so tomorrow i'll go and trim it but it is an extension of me but why am i going to trim it because it is not <laughs> looking right if it is me then it should it sh i should just accept it isn't it what do we remove tonight when you go to sleep or tomorrow when you wake up tonight you will go into your night clothes you will remove your good clothes tomorrow morning you will remove your night clothes and you will wear clean clothes after shower isn't it why why is that removal because 
because it's dirty, isn't it? <laughs> you remove dirty clothes because they are dirty. You want to wear fresh clothes. Why do you want to remove a desire? Why do you want to fulfill a desire? Because how do we remove a desire? By fulfilling it. That is how we live at the moment, isn't it? So we know if I fulfill the desire, it will not trouble me anymore. So that which comes and then can be removed, is it true? Is it real? It is not real. See? True, because we have hunger, we fulfill the hunger, hunger goes away. But does it go away permanently? It comes back again. Then again we do the same thing, morning, afternoon, evening in between and it's going on from childhood till today and we think that is natural but that is not natural that at an empirical level that is natural but now you take it as a principle that we are trying to remove that we are trying to get fulfilled by re and by removing that particular hunger we feel fulfilled but that fulfillment is temporary it is not permanent then how can I get permanent fulfillment? Good. Now the question is. So even the desire for liberation has to be given up. <laughs> even the desire for liberation has to be given up. But that is ultimately. Till then continue to maintain it. Till that moment comes when you have to give that up. So in the, so the Swamiji says, fulfillment, fulfillment of desire is the removal of desire. One wants to remove only that which causes abnormality, that is, which is not its natural healthy state. Therefore, desire is not man's natural condition. So who is a man now? <laughs> Consciousness expressing through this body and thinking that it is the body. That is a man, isn't it? That is an individual. And what is majority of the individual living for? Satisfying their <laughs> desires. So this is, this same thought is reflected in the Upanishads also, same thought is there in the Bhakti Shastra also. <coughs> Why is it told? Then who is true? The scriptures which are telling they are true or the 8 billion people or 7 billion people out of which say 6.99 billion all believe that satisfaction of desire is the fulfillment. They are true. Is it a democracy? <laughs> is it democracy? No. It's just that we have not been able to analyze our life. We have not been able to analyze, to see. It is scriptures that tell us that you are not the mind. Even though you are experiencing it, but you are not aware of it. Scriptures say you are not the body. You are living and not as the body, but you are not aware of that. So, Brahmananda is thus a desireless state. So, as I said, even the desire for reality, desire for the Brahmananda has to be given up. Because what is a desire? How does a desire express in the mind? As a way of thought, isn't it? And the reality is not a thought. A reality is, is all-inclusive and yet transcendental. If there is a thought of Brahmanandam, then still the thought and the reality are still separate. The man of wisdom is he who puts away all desires from his mind and whose mind finds comfort and joy in itself and becomes one with the consciousness. The, and the nature of this bliss is now described quoting from the Yoga Vashishta. This is a very, very famous verse. You will understand as we read. Mana eva manushyanam Mana eva manushyanam 
कारण बंध मोक्ष कारण बंध मोक्ष बंधा विषयासक्त बंधा विषयासक्त मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत सो मन एव मनुष्याण इट इज सेड बाय बाय द वाइज दैट माइंड मन एव मनुष्याण दैट माइंड ऑफ दिस मैन अलोन इज द कॉज कारण ऑफ वॉट बंध मोक्ष ऑफ बॉन्डेज एज वेल एज लिबरेशन एंड वेन डज अ माइंड बिकम अ सोर्स ऑफ बॉन्डेज वेन इट इज थिंकिंग अबाउट द वर्ल्ड और हैविंग डिजायर अबाउट द वर्ल्ड वेन डज इट बिकम अ कॉज फॉर लिबरेशन वेन इट इज दैट सेम माइंड contemplates on the truth or desires the truth but just now you said you have to give up the desire for the truth are first begin first counteract the desire for the world by the desire for the truth and then when you come to come to that poise within automatically it will reveal that even this desire is keeping me separate from myself then you drop it or let it get dropped so it is said by the wise that mind alone is the cause for bondage and liberation of the people when it is attached to objects it leads to bondage and when not attached to objects it leads to liberation but if you make if you make so what does attachment mean attachment means objectification of something we can even get objectify an imagination isn't it i can be day dreaming it's also an objective experience not necessarily i don't need to see an object which is solid i can see uh, objects in the dream also i can see objects in the fantasy also so because of this habit of mind of objective objectifying the world objectifying the dreams objectifying the fantasies objectifying the imaginations meaning seeing them as separate to myself that is called objectification giving it a form giving it a name is objectification then when it comes to the reality when it comes to the self i continue that habit of objectification i want to know in objectification what happens i am the knower the object is the known but when it comes to the reality i continue that habit and i objectify the brahmananda the reality then i become the knower and through thought i want to know the reality this is objectification but what is the reality is the reality other than the knower no so this object objectification has to stop and that happens uh, eventually it happens so continuing so right now before it was told you are attached to the world then it was told the mind gives value and att- attention to the world instead of the self now it is told that the that mind which is uh, uh, which is objectifying the world is uh, in bondage and that mind which uh, contemplates on the uh, on the self can be a cause of liberation hmm? so that mind which which loves the world continues to remain in bondage that mind which loves the self becomes a source of or a cause of not source cause of a liberation continuing another shruti vakya another from another scripture समाधि निर्धूतमल से चेत सधि निर्धूतमल से चेत निवेशित सैत्म युखम भवे निवेशित सैत्म युखम भवे न शक्त शक्य वर्णय गिरा तदा न शक्य वर्णय गिरा तदा स्वयं तदंतकरणे न गृह्य स्वयं तदंतकरणे न गृह्य 
He says, the bliss experienced by a person whose mind is washed of all its impurities by the practice of samadhi and is established in the pure self cannot be described by speech. It can only be experienced by one's own pure inner equipment. Hmm? Think. I'll give you one uh, uh, picture in front in your eyes. There is a wave. Hmm? Imagine the waves on the ocean are the thoughts. The moon on a very clear night is shining on the ocean. The moon is reflecting on the ocean. But you are not able to see the entire orb of the moon. Why? Because continuously the waves are breaking it up. That is our exp When you go, go sometimes to St. Kilda, you will see that. Hmm? It's continuously breaking. Even if one wave is there, still the moon will not be seen as an entire orb. Isn't it? Then when will it be seen? When the waters are absolutely calm. Meaning, there is no wave coming on the water. Then the, wave, then the moon, which was already there, reveals itself on the water. Isn't it? Now take this now. These are the waters of the mind. In the waters of the mind, right now, Continuously there are waves. Waves of what? Waves of thoughts. <clears throat> Seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, tasting, everything that is happening, you are giving it a word. Isn't it? If I say smell, smell is a word in your mind. If I say seeing, even the eyes are seeing, but the mind sees it as a word in its uh, mind. Feeling, you may feel, ah, but word feeling, whatever that emotion could be, that feeling could be, it is still a thought in your mind. See? And that wave, which itself is an aberration, is, an, is, a, is not natural. It can never reveal the, what? It can never reveal the moon. It can never reveal the moon. Only the calm waters can re reveal the moon. Similarly, only the calm mind can reveal the moon. No amount of thinking can reveal the self within. See? And for that, how do you how does that come about? Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga. Samadhi Abhyas. Bhakti Yoga is required, but it must lead to Samadhi. You can do Bhakti, you can do contemplation, what we are talking about right now. You can do Brahmanu Chindanam, contemplate on who am I, contemplate on the sense of I am, or by any other ways, calm your mind down. And we have seen before, you can calm. Cat, you, you can calm your mind down. How do you calm your mind down? By not giving too much value to the world. Will it happen straight away? No. It will take some time for the impact of the world. Or if, you are, if we don't know how your mind is, it may happen straight away. Without going to sleep. So what are the impurities? The impurities are objects, emotions, thoughts, uh, ignorance, uh, wailing, projection, projection meaning fantasizing, etc., etc., imagination. And, and all these can, you cannot remove it. They will automatically leave you. When? When you are constantly practicing contemplation on your own being. <coughs> on your own self, on your own self, only then, 
to just so now you think we keep listening 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 but if it is not coupled with regular consolidation regular meditate consolidation is meditation you have we have to spend that time continuous regular practice on a daily basis so that all this comes together within and it leads to samadhi and what is samadhi where the mind is totally empty it is without any waves it is without any thoughts there is no uh, objectification there such is a state of samadhi and objectification can happen only when there is duality there is i and there is that i know you i am objectifying you i know the world i am objectifying the world i know the camera i am objectifying i see the camera i hear the words i uh, taste smell the flower i taste the food all this is objectification i know the body it is objectification of the body i know the breath or i can feel the breath it's objectification of the breath i know the emotions are coming and going it's objectification of the emotions i know i had some concepts before i now there are different it's objectification of the concepts and all these things what are they nothing but thoughts so you are objectifying everything by way of thought itself is an object in your mind but self is not a subject subject self is the subject how can subject become an object if you are thinking of the subject as a subject then that subject word s u b j e c t is appearing as a thought in your mind and it is keeping you away from yourself because you are objectively thinking about yourself think about it can the eyes see themselves can the eyes see themselves no can the ears hear themselves no similarly the self also sorry the, the, the mind also cannot objectively come to know the <laughs> self and this problem comes because we think we are the mind that we think we have a pre premise that without thinking knowledge cannot take place through think thinking is the low level of collecting information and knowledge the higher is wisdom in manduk mundaka upanishad it comes para vidya and apara vidya para vidya is the worldly knowledge the scientific knowledge the theories the concepts the ideas and it can be about the entire cosmos and what is apara that because of which the entire knowledge of the cosmos is so what is that because of which the knowledge in the mind appears what is that because of which the thoughts in the mind appear can it can they come by themselves so person firstly the person has to be alive in that alive person alone the mind is in that mind thoughts come who is this fellow in the presence of whom these thoughts are coming and going consciousness see <clears throat> so that consciousness is the apara vidya the mind is the para things to contemplate points to contemplate through brahma abhyas brahma abhyas means continuous practice of contemplating on the self or the reality the seeker is constantly contemplating thinking talking of only one theme that is 
that self alone becomes the thought everywhere, all the time. Tat chintanam, anonyam, and prabodhanam, tat prabodhanam. He who is thus firmly established in the knowledge that it is the same Brahmananda which is expressing as Vishayananda and Vasanananda attains that bliss which cannot be comprehended or described in words. Meaning what? The topic, this chapter began with Vishayananda, Vasanananda and now we are reached Brahmananda. The, top, the, the chapter's name is Brahmananda Yogananda. It cannot be, the reality cannot be just inside and not everywhere else. The reality, definition of reality is that which is one without a second. It is the only thing that there is. It is the only thing that there is. Just like water is the only thing that there is, but you may give it different names. What are the different names that you give? You give it ocean, you give it tide, you give it wave, you give it water vapor, you get to give water drop, you can say uh, the, the water vapors which are evaporating, you can call it rain, you can call it well, you can call it pond, you, so many different, isn't it? But everything is water. Another example. Gold is one, but you can call that gold a necklace, a ring, a, a, what do you call? Bracelet, etc. You can call, where is your attention when you are giving all those names? Where is your attention? On the form. On the form in which that gold has been been is expressing essentially all the forms are nothing but the gold isn't it essentially all the names of water wave tsunami tide well pond they are nothing but water exactly the same way if this example is understood everything in this cosmos everything in this creation is nothing but that one reality But where is your attention? On the form. So I see one form here, I see one form here, I see one form there. Our attention is on the form. But that one reality alone is expressing through, in and through. There cannot be anything other than the reality. It will be foolish to say there is something else other than the water in a wave. <laughs> Isn't it? It will be foolish to say there is something else other than the gold in an ornament. So much is our foolishness if we don't accept or become, con become convinced of that it is the one reality which is expressing in and through everything in this creation. And what is the, the, the topic in one of the other chapters was given. What is that? Sat, that reality is Sat Chit Ananda. Through inert objects, it expresses as existence, Sat. Through the living trees, animals, there the consciousness is beginning to express and slowly reaches certain uh, levels of expression. But in human beings, it is expressing fully. Because in human being, the expression of the third aspect, which is Ananda, consciousness is fully available, including the capacity to discriminate. Animals cannot discriminate. They can, they are instinctively, according to their nature, they can choose or not eat something or not eat something. A cow will not eat meat and a tiger will not eat, uh, will not uh, give milk or eat milk, drink. it may drink milk but it is mainly carnivorous, see, that is, but that is their nature, but human being, he is conscious, certain things there are instinctive within him, but he has a choice, he can practice his choice at any given moment, he has the capacity to be in bliss, he can sit in Samadhi, animal cannot sit in Samadhi. He can realize himself, animals are not seen to realize themselves. 
So everything is nothing but Satchidanan Swaroop. Everything is permeated by that same one reality and that you are. So this Brahmananda self is a recognition of reality within this equipment. Brahmananda is the expression of that one reality as the entire. As the entire. When we start and don't come to a conclusion, when we come to a conclusion, that's where our problem is. How is this one reality uh, expressing as the entire? Don't come to a conclusion. Keep it there in your mind. Keep this thought in your mind. Oh, this self within me alone is expressing as the whole creation. How is it possible? Uh, what is the sequence? Sequence is given, but you keep it. You stay with it. You stay with it. Don't come to a final conclusion. If mind goes somewhere, come back. No, how is it possible? How has that self become, that reality, that one self, that conscious principle become this sofa? If you look at the sofa, you will never get the answer. <laughs> if you look at the creation, if you look at the world for answer, you will not get the answer. If you look at the thought, that how has it come and you are expecting the answer to come as a thought, it will not come. Then you are moving away from the topic because you are objectifying. Your attention should be on the self. In spite of that question that has arisen in the mind, then it clicks. Even a glimpse is enough. Knowledge and Ananda? Ananda, very Slavic. just beginnings of it. Beginnings of it. What about, uh, but they don't have choice. Okay. They, are, they are creatures of instinct. instinct. Man has choice. What about uh, trees and you know, plants? No, no. Plant don't have <coughs> they can't even move from one place to the other. So they are lower in creation than, as compared to animals. Their man is a sattvic creation. Animals are rajasic creation. Trees, etc., they are between tamas and rajas. And the inert kingdom, that is, that which does not have life expressing through it, or consciousness expressing through it, that is tamasic creation. So see the link. Hmm. So it is said here that the bliss of Brahmananda cannot be conveyed through gross speech, but tat swayam andha karanayana grahiyate. So the antakaran, what is antakaran? Mana, buddhi, chitta, hankar, mind, intellect, memory, and ego. This is Antakaran. Now what has happened to Antakaran? It has become absolutely quiet. And it intuitively, without any thoughts, is able to grasp the reality. How is it able to grasp the reality or intuit the reality? Just like an ocean, which is, take that analogy to be the waters of the ocean to be the mind. When the mind is, the waters are calm, it is able to grasp the, or able to reveal the full orb of the moon, isn't it? Exactly the same way, the waters of the mind, when they are thought free, in that the self automatically reveals itself, the reflected self, automatically reveals itself. That is Samadhi.
and in this and once only once you have to once you have that taste of it you will keep wanting to go back again and again again and again again and again once you have tasted a nice dish then you want to taste it again and again isn't it dishes after some time that dish you may get bored of but the self is the infinite bliss you will never get bored of it you will want to go back to it again remove the mind out of the equation and be that <laughs> you want to be that again and again till that becomes your natural state sahaja bhav <coughs> that now the student says everyone cannot be in the state of samadhi for a long time how will they ever be able to experience this brahmananda hmm? because people those who those people who sit in meditation it's not that whole life they are sitting in meditation they come out after some time in yoga and kundalini yoga and kriya yoga it is said for 21 days if you don't come out then you will not come back <laughs> but that body dis- doesn't disintegrate also see but we are seen we sit in meditation we come out again so how will we experience the year to answer that the teacher says the teacher reassures that even a glimpse of this bliss is potent enough to draw one into it without effort think about it when you look at a beautiful rainbow we go to kailash am i mad to go to kailash three times and again i am planning the fourth trip you know how hard it is you are breathless am i a masochist who likes to give trouble to himself again and again is that why i go it's like this once you have the vision of the kailash you want it again and again you want it again and again and therefore it create the nature create situations and i find myself back there again <laughs> so here also yeah, the thought is reflected when he says the bliss is so potent enough to draw one into it just like desires are some pot- desires are so potent that we get pulled by them uh, without any choice isn't it why because the uh, just thinking about that desire or fulfilling that desire is so wonderful See, think about it don't take even if you take desire as a principle then also even more so than a desire is this you would satisfy desire because you want joy because you feel joy because you feel fulfilled but it is still temporary imagine how much fulfillment one gains by being the brahmananda being the self and therefore even though you come out you are drawn the mind once the mind because mind is wanting also mind mind is seeking solace mind is look, looking for eternal contentment eternal fulfillment that is why it is running after the world through meditation practice once it experiences once the mind becomes calm and experiences that brahmananda then the mind will keep coming back to it again and again again and again again and again because that's where that's exactly like that every day mind is going to sleep again and again again and again again and again why because the bliss that it gets in deep sleep is more potent than any bliss by gained through any expression of desire out there in the world isn't it 
as much as you may get involved in the world and satisfy your desires but the bliss of the sleep is more potent imagine something even more potent than the bliss of sleep that is the bliss of the self so if, if on a daily basis you are going to sleep <coughs> then you will want to be in the, uh, in the bliss of the self even more than one event during the day which is called sleep, isn't it? So here he says, Yadhyapyasau chiram kalam Yadhyapai asau chiram kalam Yadhyapyasau chiram kalam Samadhir Durlabho Nurunam Samadhir Durlabho Nurunam Tatha Pikshaniko Brahma Tatha Pikshaniko Brahma Anandam Nishchayayat Nishchayayat Wait one moment Anandam Nishchayayat Yasau Anandam Nishcha Yayat Yasau Although this Samadhi is difficult to attain for a long period for men in for men meaning human beings in general even then this Samadhi for a short time is able to provide the conviction of this bliss of Brahman What is this conviction like? This conviction is like a person, two people coming together and one has uh, tasted uh, sugar and the other has never tasted sugar in his life. No amount of PhDs and scriptures you narrate to him and all logic you give to him of what sugar is, is able to going to convince him. But once he tastes it, then can any amount of expression, I tell you it was so wonderful, it was so, how can I tell you, that's all you can do. You know, no words are required. Because whatever he says, that sweetness that he has experienced of sugar is much more than the words can express. It is his direct experience. Exactly the same way. <coughs> Once this fellow, this seeker has experienced the self, experienced, when I say experience, now you will think like I am experiencing you, not like this. He has got the direct experience. Aparoksha Anubhuti. Without any means. Because he is the experiencer and he is the experienced also. <laughs> Once that has happened, then there is nothing, nothing more to say. He cannot express it. The best way that you can express it is the way the scriptures do it for us. That is the best way. So just like that person who ate sugar first time and became convinced of what sweetness is but still no amount of words that he tries to use to express that what he has experienced can ever justify or convince another person. Exactly the same way. This person who has experienced the self in himself on the seat of meditation as himself the potency of it, the sweetness of it, the bliss of it, it cannot be communicated as it is his own direct experience. One need not get concerned that one is unable to stay in Samadhi for protract protracted length of time. Once the knack of getting into that state is grasped, then even glimpses of Brahmananda are sufficient for him to be convinced that what the scriptures said and the Guru said uh, is true. The only prerequisite for experiencing those glimpses is Shraddha faith. With faith that it is possible. 
that I can get into meditation, that I can experience Samadhi, that I will be established in the Self, that all my doubts and uh, objectification will be removed by the grace. So the self-talk that is there, that, is, that should be of a higher quality. That should help propel the mind to lose itself in the contemplation of the self. Such a self-talk should be there. The only prerequisite for experiencing those glimpses is Shraddha. Shraddha is what saves the seeker from being deflected from the straight path and from falling prey to the yaksha of doubt. See, as long as there is objectification there in the mind, if what happens, I'll tell you. If the faith is not there, you will fall into the doubt that there is nothing there. And the last step will not take, it will not happen. That is, that what is meant to happen will not happen. Because you are thinking. Only by faith, that last thought, that last desire, even though it is of the self, that last thought is dropped. Faith in the self, that it, in the presence, in yourself. That what the teachers have said, remember the faith is of four types, what are the four types of faith? Or we should have in, first is we should have the faith in the Lord, we should have the faith in the scriptures, we should have the faith in the Guru and we must have faith in ourselves. That what the scriptures are saying, what the Lord, that the scriptures are the words of the divine and those scriptures are explained to me or by to me by my guru or guru has experienced what he's talking about in the scriptures and I have the ability to get to that reality about which the scriptures are talking about and the Lord is established in I can be that and that alone, that faith alone will bring the inner strength, it alone will bring the, the, the stamina, the commitment, otherwise at a drop of a hat, at a drop of a hat, we want to do something, uh, I am coming to the satsang, and why didn't you come to the satsang? Oh, I got, uh, I got busy with something. Oh, what was important? You planned for so long to go to the satsang, but then you get, got distracted. So that distraction was more important than the satsang. I want to meditate every morning. Every year we make a resolution, but uh, years have passed. We never get up in the morning to meditate. What is the distraction? The sleep is the distraction there. So, have faith in your capacity, have faith in your ability, have faith that the Lord is within your hearts and He will make it happen for you. Have faith in the Guru, that the Guru, will, His guidance will be there and it will give you the right direction so that your mind is not caught up in anything. He will be able to solve whatever doubts are coming. He may answer or He may challenge you to find the answers yourself. But we must have faith. But if we go and ask, no, no what is this? And He doesn't answer, I think He doesn't know. And we get away. <laughs> Isn't it? There are, it, uh, the Guru does not interact, the teacher does not interact with a seeker in only one particular way. His attention in, uh, is on a rounded development of his mind, of that seeker's <coughs> mind, so that that mind does not get caught up in anything. But we, thinking that we are more intelligent than anyone else on this planet, think 
that we are smarter than the scriptures, we are smarter than the teacher or the Guru Maharaj, we are smarter than the God. <laughs> that is not possible. And once you find that you are one with the God, then this question of smartness or judgment, it will not be there. <laughs> and to take away from this doubt, the faith is required. Doubt about God, doubt about what scriptures are telling, and doubt about the teacher or the Guru Maharaj, what he is explaining. Only faith can take you beyond that. That we don't understand what, sometimes it happens, sometimes we don't understand everything, it doesn't gel. Have faith that when the right time comes it will click, at least it has gone in now. Everything doesn't have to click straight away. Just like cancer doesn't happen straight away. It takes years of wrong habits for a cancer to develop, isn't it? It takes years of wrong habits wrong habit for a diabetes to develop or cholesterol to come about. Similarly, realization and understanding doesn't happen just like it may by His grace. But majority of us it doesn't happen that way. It requires you have to because of our extroverted life which needs to become introverted and that introverted should not turn into selfishness instead of selfishness, it should be focusing on the reality, the self, the Atmic principle, which is free of selfishness. <laughs> so, I mean, having doubt is uh, about the reality is natural because where can I describe it? Correct. And, and the mind, mind cannot apprehend it. it. Mind cannot apprehend it. As long as you are thinking, this will be the doubt. But it can be your direct experience. Masters are saying it, scriptures are saying it and we have to prepare ourselves so that it can happen to us. Isn't it? So that it can happen to us. The teacher continues to stress the importance of this Shraddha. Shraddha Lurvyasani Yotra Shraddha Lurvyasani Yotra Nishchinotyeva Sarvatha Nishchinotyeva Sarvatha Nishchite tu Sakrutasmin Nishchite tu Sakrutasmin <coughs> Vishwasityanya dapyayam, Vishwasityanya dapyayam. A seeker with faith and commitment to the practice of, the, of this samadhi is certainly able to experience the bliss of Brahman. Having experienced this bliss of Brahman even once, he is able to experience it even at other time. Once you have experienced the sugar, you are able to experience it again. You will never forget it. If you get it, if you don't get it forever in your life and last breath, last thing, I want sugar and someone puts one piece of sugar uh, cube on your tongue, you will know it is sugar, isn't it? You cannot forget it. Exactly the same way. So what I just told you about the four faiths, that is what is told here in this verse. Hmm? So one must have mountainous faith in himself, in the scriptures and in the Lord, being totally addicted to Brahmananda to such a degree that nothing can convince him to the contrary. That he does not allow other words, the words of non-believers, to 
deconvince him about the reality that he essentially is. An ornament cannot come out of nothing. This world cannot come out of nothing. It cannot come out of non-existence. Do you understand what I am saying? It has to come out of something that is existing. Gold has to be there in order for ornament to come about. Water has to be there in order for various aspects of water to come about. So if space, air, fire, water, earth, people, man, uh, animals, trees, uh, the entire cosmos, the entire creation, seen and unseen, for it to express, seen creation is waking world and the dream world, unseen creation is the deep sleep world. Both these manifest and unmanifest creation, it cannot come out of nothing. It must come out of something. It must be an expression of something. How can nothing be an expression of uh, objects that itself is nothing? It must be coming from something. And that something is the eternal something. And that is Brahmananda. And that is not other than that which is expressing through you at this moment. Be it. Be addicted to it. Be obsessed with it. Go after it as if there is no tomorrow. That's why we keep teaching, we keep meditating, we keep thinking about it. And he keeps creating new new situations so that we can keep talking about it in many many different ways. So that our mind is continuously being washed by the thoughts of the reality. And that's how we find ourselves, His grace. See? Furthermore, even if this experience of Brahmananda takes place just once and for a mere second, he is able to invoke this experience again and again at other times also. He can get in and out of this experience at will. See? Just like you can... I don't know if you have come across any... You can go to sleep for five minutes and can you come out of sleep after five minutes? I know one person, knew one person. And he say, see, now I'm going to sleep. Attack, gone. And you calculate. I'll get up after two minutes. And two minutes over, at them say he gets up. How does he know that it's two minutes over? For us, sleeping is a problem and then coming out of sleep is a problem. <laughs> Not for everyone, but a lot of people go through that, isn't it? For us, going into the mind is a problem because we don't like what we see there. And then coming, getting out of the mind also is a problem because we are not able to let go of the mind. For us, having large ambition is a problem. That I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to do this, I want to do that. Majority of the people don't think big. They only think small. What do they think? Me, my house, my children, my investments and that's it. That's all their periphery of influences. That's all they can imagine. Think about it. These are your attachments. You can't, for you, first you are afraid to think big and then you think small and then you are afraid to come out of that small thinking also <laughs> and let go of that small thinking. For such small hearted people, meditation is not possible. Realization is not possible. It requires courage. It requires big-heartedness. It requires 
a readiness to be condemned by the world and yet not be disturbed in your mind because you understand from where they are coming they may not understand but you understand because your focus is not them your focus is on the self you see the entire creation and expression of the self alone so you forgive and forget and you keep wherever whichever direction whichever way in whichever manner the reality or the absolute is expressing out of you, out of you having experienced this bliss how does this individual behave in this world very important <laughs> i just told you but let's see tadruk pomanudasina tadruk pomanudasina kale pyananda vasanam kale pyananda vasanam upeksha mukhyam anandam upeksha mukhyam anandam bhavayat eva tat paraha bhavayat eva tat paraha such a seeker with faith and commitment discarding the vasana ananda during the state of indifference engages himself in the primary bliss of brahmananda alone and here it's very cryptic remember what was vishayananda vishayananda was then i i thinking the bliss we, we used to feel that the joy is in the objects if i get that object if i get that car if i get that woman if i get that man if i get that child if i get that food i will be happy but actually speaking what was the how where was the bliss coming from the bliss is your nature and the aberration in your mind was the desire for something when that desire subsided got fulfilled the bliss which was your nature in that quiet unagitated mind that bliss expressed that was vishayananda second vasanananda where was vasanananda experienced <coughs> it was before going to sleep and after coming back out of sleep isn't it just before you are going to sleep you are as much as the phone rings whatsapp messages are coming you got so many things to do but you are just remembering the bliss of i want to just get into the bed and go to sleep you are thinking of the bliss of sleep but you are thinking you have not gone to sleep yet you are remembering that ah oh, so it will be so nice now i am and you are into the bed also but you are not gone to sleep you are still thinking of it that is vasanananda and at that time the world is not troubling you now exactly the same thing happens when you wake up you are awake but the world has not entered into your mind you know the world is there but you are udasin you are indifferent to the world you don't care if the train is missed if the work is uh, sicky has to be put no i am uh, i just let me who care hey you have to go to school who cares just one more minute one more minute <laughs> you want to keep reveling in that bliss the the extension of the sleep but now the mind you are awake but the mind has not become agitated why because the world has not entered yet why because you are not giving it value you are still giving value to the remembered bliss that is the udasina some is udasina can happen meditation as well of course uh, these are all meditations i'm just telling you so this these both things can happen before going into meditation or into samadhi or just coming out of samadhi and why these topics were taken of avasanaanand so that you don't think going in experiencing vasana nanda is equal to samadhi so the clarity was given to us so th that is what he is telling here that uh, that even udasin means indifference 
So you should be indifferent to indifference also. That is what is told. You should be udasin toward udasina bhava also. Because bhava means feeling. You know that you are not that you are there awake, but you are not interested in the world. You have this feeling. Even be indifferent to that feeling. Be yourself. Be yourself. And continue. It will give you some examples afterwards about how such a person lives in this and behaves in the world that we will see in our next class. Good, good topic for us to practice. Yeah, but practice we must. Merely listening is not enough. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Just sit quietly for a minute.